hey, it's art time again. And let me tell you why I am super excited about this lesson. It's because it's about outer space, the planets. You might be studying the planets right now, you might not be, but I wanted to do this lesson on the planets and I just thought this would be a great time to do the lesson on the planets. Now, the reason I am so excited is because when I was growing up, I loved looking into outer space. I just thought it was this mysterious, great beyond. I watched this video over and over again. I forget the name of it now, but it was maybe called Space Camp because it was a bunch of kids that went to this camp that was about outer space and then they accidentally got launched into outer space and I just thought, oh my goodness, that would be so amazing. And then I also uh, got a telescope one year for Christmas because I loved outer space and my dad would help me find different planets. It was super hard and you couldn't see them very well through the very poor telescope that I got. But you know, at certain times of the year, at certain times of the day, you can see some of the planets. They just kind of look like bright stars. But I used to think it was so fun when dad would do the research with me to find out what planet we might be able to see in the sky and then we would look at it and we would see it through the telescope and I was always amazed at how mm, it didn't look like what I was expecting through that telescope you know I was expecting this clear image as if it was NASA's telescope itself but it never was so um, anyways I love the experience and a few years ago I got the honor to um, go through this devotional book a hundred galactic devotions um, it's a devotional book for kids and it's discovering the God of this universe and it's an amazing devotional book so if you are looking for a really good devotional book this is absolutely amazing and I picked it up on Amazon and I don't work for Amazon so I can promise you I'm not getting any money from this but it's a really good devotional book today I wanted to share with you it was just a real quick devotional from this book one that I absolutely love as you can see there's ones that I have marked in here I know I have this like weird uncanny obsession with outer space I even took a class when I got to college they said I needed one more science class go get that to get an art degree I needed two sciences ah, weird it's <laughs> so weird Anyways, you'll figure all that out in a few years. Um, so when I was in college and they said I needed my second science class, I was like, hmm, um, what's the options? And astronomy was one of them, so of course I jumped on that. Um, it wasn't quite what I expected as far as the class goes, but we can talk more about that later. Anyways, the devotional that I wanted to share with you today is called The Beginning. Uh, the key verse for this is just the one that has really inspired my lesson today. It's called Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So I want you to think about the last picture you drew. You created it. You decided what colors to use and how it would look. And before you began drawing, the paper was blank. Before God created the heavens and the earth, nothing existed. Both the earth and the heavens began when God created them. When God made the heavens and the earth, he was just getting started. So the thing that I want to ask you is, why is it important to know God created the heavens and the earth? And you can be thinking on that, and if you come up with an answer, I'd love to hear from you about why, why do you think it is important to know that God created the heavens and the earth. And another thing, now this is something that you might want to ask a parent, that's a really great thing about this book, is it gives you something for you to think about, and then something for you to ask a parent, which is awesome, because we all need a little bit of help from our parents in understanding things. But anyways, ask a parent, um, when do you first remember hearing that God created the heavens and the earth? So isn't that a, a fun question to ask your mom or dad or grandma, grandpa, anybody that's around and you can ask them, when, when do you, do you remember that? What, what did you think? So anyways, um, today our art project, we're going to draw the different planets. We're going to look at the planets and we're going to draw them. In a later lesson, we will be painting the background. Today we're gonna to be putting our planets in to make our solar system, but then we have to put the stars in all around there. And the great thing about those stars is we get to paint them in. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Go ahead and use a thick paper for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and thanks so much for participating with me.
For today's lesson, you will need paper, roller, scissors, and crayon. Step one, we are going to cut our paper in half. Like I said, you will need a thick piece of paper. We are going to cut this piece of paper in half horizontally. So I'm just gonna grab my ruler and I'm going to find where halfway of my paper is. You might need a parent or grandparent's help for this. I'm looking at how big the paper is and then dividing that in half. Mine was nine inches wide and so half of nine would be four and a half. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I draw just a little mark at four and a half and then another little mark at four and a half and that way when you measure twice and then use your ruler to connect the two you get a nice straight line if you only do it once then sometimes your ruler ends up going downhill or something like that so now i have my nice straight line and i'm going to cut it So let's get that one piece of paper out of the way. Now you have an extra half sheet and we are just going to use this one piece of paper here, this half sheet. We're going to use it horizontally or the long ways like it is taking a bath. Oh, and we are going to draw a part of a circle that is taking up that whole left side of the paper. This is going to be the sun. As we know, our sun is much larger than uh, the planets. I want it to just show a fraction of the sun. During today's lesson, we will be layering crayons, probably something you don't typically do, but you could see that I used orange and yellow together to make my sun. By adding the yellow over top of the orange, it'll blend the two together and make for a cool effect. We'll do this with a lot of our planets, adding layers of crayon. The other strange thing that you'll see me do during this video is I will first do something on the left side of the paper and then I'll move to the right side and then back to the left side and then the right side so that our whole solar system can fit on the paper. So we are now going with our last planet in our solar system, which we know is Neptune. Poor Pluto was determined to be a dwarf planet, so it's not a planet anymore. Um, Neptune is kind of an aqua color. Um, it's going to be darker than Uranus and so we are going to color it um, with our aqua color and then go over it with white to kind of blend that aqua together and cover the white of the paper really, really well. We want to make sure there is absolutely no white of the paper showing through. This will be important for our next lesson when we paint the nighttime sky. I'm going to add a little bit of dark blue over my aqua color just because, um, like I said, this planet will be darker than Uranus or Uranus, however you prefer to say it. So you want to make sure that it looks darker by adding a little bit of darker blue over top of it. I am now going to skip back to the first planet in our solar system, Mercury. It's very tiny, very close to the sun, and it's kind of a grayish it looks very similar to me to our moon so I'm gonna put some gray some black and some white on there and just kind of mix it together make sure that I have the white of the paper completely covered next we're skipping back to Uranus or Uranus and um, I'm trying to make it about the same size as the Neptune planet because they are roughly the same size and it is a lighter color than Neptune but it's of a similar color. So I colored lightly with my aqua color there and then I'm going over it with white and trying to make sure that that is completely colored in with between the white and the aqua color and there's not any white of the, the paper showing through and that's very important. The next planet that we will do is the second planet from the sun, Venus. I've seen Venus look a number of different ways in different pictures that I've seen, but one that I've seen a lot is it looking like a dark yellowish and brown mixed together. So that is what I'm gonna go with today. I have my yellow down there, and then I will get my brown, and I will um, add some brown and yellow and kind of try to mix those together, um, and a little bit of gray, because like I said, it's kind of a dark yellow that will conclude our Venus. I do want to say you probably see me keep brushing something away. That's the crayon. When you try to use it really thick and layered over itself, it kind of creates a lot of little crayon pieces and I just brush those away. It's no big deal. Next we're going to Saturn and Saturn is larger than Uranus and Neptune and so I'm trying to make it larger um, there and it also has like a yellowish dark 
color to it similar to that of Venus. So I'm going to color it first an entire yellow planet. It's not that bright of a yellow, so you'll see that I add a lot to it. But first we start with coloring it entirely with yellow. And then next I'm going to pick up my brown and I will add brown over the yellow a little bit. I notice it's a little bit darker in certain spots and not kind of not really like an entire darkness. So I'm adding it more on the top and the bottom of that planet and then I'm adding gray over top of that. Now don't worry if it looks like it's getting too dark. We will add some more yellow in. Um, I really like layering colors like this because it will help you get to the desired color that you need. So again, like I said, I'm picking up my yellow and adding it over top of those um, brown and gray that we put in over top of the first yellow. And also, doing that also smooths everything together. Now we're getting ready for the rings, so you just want to add in a ring. And then Saturn's rings, it has so many rings, they kind of look thick um, from far away, and so trying to add thickness to it. Um, as you may know, all of these gas giants here, um, Jupiter, which we haven't drawn yet, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus, they all have rings around them, but the Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune's rings are so small that you can't really see them. And now we're going to draw the third planet from the sun. Do you know what it is? Earth! So I'm adding some blue and some green and Earth is so small compared to the gas giants that it's going to be hard to get that blue and green in there looking like much of anything. So you don't need to try to make it look like continents or anything. I'm adding a little bit of white to the blue areas to, to help it look more like a little bit of cloudiness. But we're drawing in such a small area here that as long as you have a little bit of blue and a little bit of green, hopefully you will get it looking a little bit like All right, Earth. so now we're headed for Jupiter. And we're going to do Jupiter right there next to Saturn. And we're trying to make Jupiter bigger than Saturn because it is the largest of the gas giants. I'm going to lightly sketch out Jupiter with my brown crayon. Now anytime I'm using one of these crayons to sketch out a planet, if that makes you feel uneasy, feel free to use a pencil and then color over it with your crayons. Jupiter has a lot of lines and variation in its color, and so I first just kind of mark those in with my brown, but I will be adding a lot of different colors to Jupiter. I actually think that Jupiter would be my favorite of all the planets and how it looks because it is more colorful than the others. And you, did you know that Saturn is the one that is nicknamed the Jewel of the Sky? Oh well, I guess I picked the not Jewel. Anyways, I'm mixing um, a little bit of yellow and then now I'm putting some peach in there. And you want to make sure that you cover the entirety of the paper. So there is a little bit of creamish color to Jupiter. You need to use your white and peach mixed together to get that. You do not want to let just the white of the paper shine through because when we go to paint the nighttime sky, it will not be white in the end. So we're trying to cover the entirety of the paper with crayon inside of the planets. So as you can see, I have applied the peach to the top, the middle, and the bottom. And now I'm going to pick up my white and I'm going to apply that up right above that bottom section. And then I'm going to add in the famous red spot that is that storm that's been going on forever. And I will add in a little bit of reddish color up towards one of the bands of the top. And again, going in with that peach and just layering that in. Um, you can just try your best here. If you at any time need to pause this video, I know I'm working fast. And that's so that you don't get bored with my drawing. But you can pause it and you can back it up and then you can let it go forward again and try to follow what I'm doing. Or you can add in the colors as you think that they should be added in. You can look at a picture of Jupiter. That's how I am doing all of this at each planet. I'm looking at a picture of the planet as I'm coloring it. Um, so then I'm adding white in over top of all these different areas to lighten it because it looks a little too yellowish to me right now. Um, so just adding in some white and you know, um, you can brush away the extra that's going to be rolling off there. But it is so hard I think when you're trying to layer different colors um, to get it looking exactly the way that you want and Jupiter is so full of colors. 
I'm going over it with brown a little bit because it looked like it might be a little bit darker than what I originally had it and then putting in some more white. The next planet and the last planet that we will add is Mars, which is nicknamed the red planet. It's kind of a reddish orange mix, mixed with uh, brown. So I'm first adding in my red orange and then I'm going to pick up my brown and add to that. I don't know if you knew this or not, but Mars is a little smaller than Earth. Earth and Venus are close or roughly about the same size and then Mercury is smaller than Mars, Earth, and Venus. Um, Mercury is the smallest of all the planets. So that concludes our planets. We need to add the asteroid belt. I don't know if you knew this, but the asteroid belt has um, some asteroids in it that are small and some that are big. And some of them in that belt are so big that they are considered dwarf planets. So um, you can make those little asteroids at different sizes. Um, now I'm going through and I'm just adding spots with my white crayon that could be stars later on. Um, if you have white paint, you might not need to do that with your white crayon. You can't see the white crayon now, but when we add paint over it, you'll be able to see the white crayon shining through like stars. But if you have white paint, you can splatter that on in the very end. Well, that concludes our planet drawing. Next time we're together, we will be working on painting the nighttime sky behind the planets or the outer space behind the planets. I hope you enjoyed today's drawing and I really am so glad that you joined me. I hope you have a great day.